I'm using Windows 2000 in a virtual session because I'm going to talk about some command line stuff with 7-zip, which is decidedly old school. But you know what? It's good to know this stuff anyway because if you ever decide to run batch files or scripts in Windows when you need to archive things, it's good to know the 7-zip command line version of it. Now, I have the latest version, even in Windows 2000 here, 9.20. And you'll notice that in the help section, there is says command line version. Oh, okay. Well, where is that? It is in the uh, Seven Zip directory. So if I launch a command, let me just make this bigger so you can see it better. So if I go to program file Seven Zip, dir. It's right here, 7z.exe, and you would run it from here. Uh, let me just minimize this for a second. I have this here too. This is this this is 64-bit Windows 7. It's still C drive program files 7-zip. So if you're on 32-bit Windows 2000, 32-bit XP, 64-bit XP, 32-bit <laughs> Vista or 7, or 64-bit Vista or 7 it's always in the same place which is C program files 7-zip. Right, let's get back to 2000 here. There we go. So if we do 7z with nothing and press enter it tells all the stuff we can do with it. It's most likely true all you want to do is add which is just A. And if you want to extract E. It's easy to remember A to add, E to extract. The way that it works is pretty simple. It's probably true you want to stick to the 7z format. Now I have a folder on my desktop called test, which is just a bunch of files that I downloaded. Some C cleaner versions and some Flash Player stuff and whatnot. Now if I want to compress this using, uh, excuse me, create an archive using the command line version, I have to type out the entire path and also set the destination and all that other good stuff and whatever but here's how it's done so it's 7z a so we're gonna start with the actual program which is 7z you could type it as 7z exe if you want to but it's not necessary just 7z and then a there's no dash because you'll notice that the commands are different from the switches if you're using a command there's no dash if you're using a switch there is a dash and uh, for the next part here I will be adding a switch which is a T which is type and it's just 7z so I'm going to launch 7zip add to archive set the type to 7z and the next part is the name of the file you want to create now I want this file to appear on the desktop so let me launch another command prompt here this would be easier to do in Windows 7 because I have the uh, address bar up here but Oh well. So C documents and settings administrator desktop. Okay, so oops. Didn't mean to right click there. And edit mark. Enter to copy. Okay. Because this location has spaces in the path name, I have to put it surrounded in quotes. So I'll do this quote, right click, C documents and settings here, desktop, backslash test.7z so so far I have 7z add to an archive type of 7z to this archive name in this location and I say okay what files do I want to uh, add to the archive again the location has spaces in the path name so I'll quote documents settings administrator desktop slash test wildcard and what this means is I want to add uh, okay I'll go over it again <laughs> launch 7-zip add to archive of the type of 7-zip to this archive and have everything in this folder which is actually right here add into that archive and if all goes well I press enter it'll do it which it does and it gives a nice little progress meter as it's going along when it's done we should see it right here which will be in just a moment. This is a little slow because I'm running it in virtual session. Everything is okay. Ah, there it is. 
if I open it up. Ta-da! There's all my stuff. Now you notice it did not include the folders. Now the reason it didn't include the folders is because I didn't tell it to. You can do what's called a recursive. Um, this is one, I believe, one of the flags here. Uh, include, exclude, include file names. Yeah, there is recurse subdirectory. So if I was to do this again, let me just delete that. Okay, so that would be F3. Oh, no, actually up. There we go. So if I go back here, and in addition to the T flag, I add the R flag, which will recursively, as it says right here, recurse subdirectories. It will include everything in the test folder and the subfolders underneath it. Just go to the end of the line here and go. And if all goes well, it should recurse the subdirectory. Yes, it did. See it right there? It's doing it. And we'll just wait till it's finished. By the way, when you do this, it should be a lot faster. Again, because I'm running this in a virtual session. All right, any day now. <laughs> there it goes. And there it is. If I double click, and it has the recursed subdirectories in it. Fantastic. So, if you want to run 7-zip from the command line, the easiest way to do it is to actually launch the file manager first, go into the help section, and just read up on the syntax. Because I've only done just the basic, basic stuff on how to do this. And it has right here A, which I showed you, add, bench, delete, extract, list, test, update, extract with full path. And then all the switches. I covered uh, type of archive and recursive and there's more options to recursive so you want to check that out and you don't have to use a 7z oh it also shows you how to do it if you want to split an archive from the command line so be sure to check that out too so if you wanted to uh, break up an ISO file or something like that lots of good reading in there so if you want to do things from the command line and script up a bunch of 7z stuff it's good stuff to know